Hi, I'm Kim Rado from Starry Night Hollow and today I'm here to share with you some really wonderful stitches you can use to elevate the level of your work with these beautiful threads called Starry Night Dazzles. The first part of this demonstration we will show you a French knot, a whip stitch, and a bouillon. Okay, so we're going to do a bouillon. So I've knotted the end of my thread. Sometimes you won't want to, but in the case of the first one, it's probably a good idea just to have it to be anchored. So you're going to pull your thread up, and then you're going to take your needle, and you're going to come right back down really close to it and back out about a quarter of an inch. And then you're going to wrap around your needle clockwise. And how big the bouillon is is, about, is going to be relative to how many stitches you put. I'm going to do seven. Four, five, six, seven. And you can see I'm securing it with my thumb. You don't want the stitches to be too, too tight because you now have to pull the thread through it. And you're going to hold it with the coil with your thumb and gently just pull it through a little bit. And then you're going to see how you have your little bouillon right there and you're gonna come right back down underneath, pretty close to where you put your first uh, stitch in, and come back up on the back side of that bouillon and pull it tight. And there you have a really pretty little bouillon stitch. And then you're ready to start your next one, which you would go in at the same place and come out a quarter of an inch ahead and do another one, start wrapping again. So an example of how to use the bouillons is in this quilt where I've used it to go around the edges of these trees. And I actually was a little bit lazy. What I recommend doing is appliquing your piece down first, but I actually used the bouillon to applique the piece down. So that was based on where I brought my needle up and went back down through the applique fabric. Uh, if you don't do that, if you applique it first, you can just make it as a pretty little border around the edge. So I'm now going to show you how to do a French knot. French knot is one of my favorites to do, especially with my Starry Night Dazzles, because the, the knot itself, when it's completed, looks like a glass bead. But you can sew right over it with a machine or anything, so they're really wonderfully versatile knots. So to begin your French knot, I actually knot the end of my thread, but you don't need to. You can secure it by holding it on the back of your piece. The needle will come up right through the bottom, and you're going to pull it all the way up. Take your needle and your thread and around the needle clockwise, wrap it three times, not too tight because it'll be harder to get your thread through it. Holding it and securing it with your thumb, bring the tip of your needle back down as close to where you came up as you can, push it straight down, reach underneath and pull the needle through. Hold the thread. If you let go of your thread, you're going to get little bubbles in your French knot. So there's your French knot. To continue, you can come up where it, wherever you want your next knot to be. So it can be right next to it, or it can be over here, a little further away from it. And then you do exactly the same thing again. As I said in the instructional, the use of the French knots is phenomenal. It's great. In this piece, you can see, this is Sleeping Beauty for an upcoming book. You can see that I used it for tiny little rosebuds over her head creating an archway and then over here on the side I actually used a, a grayer one to make it look like three-dimensional pebbles so you can see you get really wonderful texture using these things and they do look like glass beads yet the sparkle isn't so much that it's over blinged it's just a really nice little accent so in this example the French knots create a very magical effect I use them to create cascading flowers coming down and when you go down to the bottom you see this is the reflection part so it's reflected back up. I also used in this one a running back stitch which you'll see later with a darker color that even popped the French knots more. So the next stitch I'm going to show you is a whip stitch and the reason I'm showing you a whip stitch is because most people when they see my work they ask me what applique stitch I use and they think it's a blanket stitch but it's not. I don't do the carryover. So I'm going to show you the whip stitch because it's a very simple stitch to use and it's very effective. So as with my other stitches I do a knot to secure it from the back but again you can hang anchor the stitch with your hand from behind 
you bring your needle up really close to the edge of your applique. Pull it up, come straight down to the side. Now I usually do a pretty small stitch, but you can actually even make them go wide so that they look more like a buttonhole. But we're gonna go here for now. Down, straight across from your stitch and come out to the side of the applique piece. Pull your thread through and then same thing, go right down to the side, up, and again, they can come closer together or you can separate them out more. It's really how you want it to look or how much coverage you want on the side of your applique piece. I hope that they will be easy for you to follow and that you will use them a lot with these Starry Night Dazzles. Enjoy them.